Hello, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you have been here before. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I colored this iguana scales with colored pencils and the complicated process of all the details and everything like that. I haven't done a reptile type drawing since I drew a snake about a year ago, so I thought a scales video would be something that would be interesting to some people. Um, this can apply to other animals that have scales as well, not just iguanas, of course, but I thought I would show you guys my process on how I'm drawing this. Also, I'm sorry about the lack of a nice intro, but today there's a lot of smoke in the sky because where I live, there's a lot of fires going on around, and so it's so disgusting. The lighting is really terrible, so I thought I wouldn't even bother with that. Um, that being said, if you're interested in the sketching process, I do have a separate video where I show how I get my sketch and I talk about some tips about sketching. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So generally, when you have a more complicated drawing like this, you want to pick a central point, start there, and work your way out and around from there. So I started off with the mouth area. You can see I've already done the eye and the nostril, so that's out of the way. But for the scales, I'm going to start around the mouth. And what I did was I defined the mouth with a gray colored pencil, and now I'm going to start and define the scales directly above and below the mouth. And they're not all very even. So when I'm defining an outline, um, when I'm outlining the scales, I don't want my outline to be the same pressure and I don't want it to look like a cartoon outline because this is supposed to be a realistic drawing. So instead, there might be some corners of the outline of the scale that look darker and then some areas that look a little bit lighter and that makes it look a little bit more realistic, kind of makes it look like there's even shadows and things going on. And I think that that's important when you're doing a realistic work. If you do need to do some kind of outline, you have to make sure it doesn't look perfectly even and it's not really the same pressure throughout. To me, the actual coloring of the scales is a bit easier. So I'm just looking at my reference photo and picking out the blues, the greens, the yellows, there's even some oranges and things like that. That's why I picked this iguana to draw because honestly, it's very detailed and colorful and pretty. But anyways, so I'm looking at my reference photo and each scale has a slight variation of color. You can see that as I'm coloring right now. Like there's one that's more of a foresty green color, then there's one that's a mix of a blue and then a green, and then there's one that's mostly blue, and then there's one that even has some tones of like red in there. So I really wanna make sure I have like an individual look for each scale. This is important when you're doing bigger scales like this on a more colorful animal and all that variation is gonna make it look realistic in the end versus if you just flat color it like one color, don't really try too hard on creating individual scales. But that being said, this is gonna be very time consuming to do a drawing like this. So especially picking an iguana for my drawing, I knew that this would take me a long time to complete because they're especially hard to draw. If you're doing something like a snake, there's a little bit less of a variation um, sometimes with snakes depending on um, what type of snake it is um, because I have done a snake before I'll actually link that video above too it's from a year ago and that one was a lot different in comparison to this one because the scales were pretty much the same color throughout so it wasn't as difficult you might be able to notice I'm not outlining every scale with the same color so you saw me use gray before I used a bit of an orange red tone before and I'm also using a bit of an indigo blue above the nostril because the color starts to get really blue up there. So I'm using that to define the scales on that part. And I think actually coloring in the scale is a lot easier than outlining it because coloring it in, I just use a light hand and I pick out what colors I see in my reference photo. I make sure that each one looks a little bit different. I don't want them all to look uniform and the same because these are kind of like bigger medium sized scales. So I want to give them more like individual out individuality. I want to give them an individual look and make sure it's not completely just flat looking. So once you get the hang of it and you know what you're doing, I think that you're pretty much just repeating the same process over and over again and you just have to have patience. The area I'm working on now to the right side of the eye, it has a lot of like dark blue and indigo blue going on. Uh, mixed in with the light blue of course compared to like the area above the mouth has a lot of blue green tones and foresty green tones going on so paying attention to the different colors in the different areas and that always helps as well but really from this point um, these 
scales in the middle here that are sort of just like a medium size pretty much doing those all the same a little bit of variation in the shapes and colors but the method is pretty much the same through this um, and I am trying to pay extra like close attention to the scales on the face as I said before just because I want this area to stand out a bit more and I want this to be really detailed and really beautiful the rest of the iguana of course I'm gonna try my best on that too but a lot of the scales on the body of the iguana are just way too small and it's not going to be quite as detailed as this area it's gonna be detailed still but the details are gonna be so small that it's gonna kind of just look good all together as a whole if I work on it whereas for this part each individual scale matters a little bit more if that makes any sort of sense also another sketching tip I do have a video on sketching tips altogether but another sketching tip that I don't think I mentioned in that video is when you're drawing the scales they do kind of go in rows if you are drawing freehand for some of the bigger scales they are in rows and they do have like different directions that they go in so as long as you pay attention to that and the different shapes and sizes of the scales um, your sketch will turn out pretty good okay so I see that I have pretty much finished the area by the nose and mouth I'm starting to work my way down from there some of these scales get a little bit brighter so if you notice that some scales are more faded and some are brighter definitely portray that in your drawing it definitely looks more realistic when you have variation going on um, so these are like brighter tur uh, turquoise really pretty scales that are coming down towards the beard <laughs> that sounds so weird but yeah I think I have to call the iguana's beard the beard because that's what it is so i move the camera down a little bit so you can see what i'm doing a little bit better in this area um, you can also kind of tell that i'm outlining a lot of these skills with orange and then adding some gray or blue in some areas because the outline is sometimes rather light and it is pretty orange in a lot of um, the skills in my reference photos so I want to pay attention to that not every skill has to be outlined with the same exact color or even outlined dark for that matter because some of them just aren't and some of them have a bit of like light highlight so if you notice that I'm not coloring the entire scale completely there's a little bit of like a lighter area or a wider area it's definitely because I'm trying to show that there's a highlight it's easier to leave a white space than to try and add a highlight later <laughs> which you can always do but that's only for super bright highlights I like to go in with a white gel pen later um, but for like more subtle highlights I just kind of like to create a gradient so that's what I'm doing for the scales that I'm working on here that are that very really pretty light blue color and now we're going to get into the bigger scales and for these I am just going to pay more attention to defining them because actually some of them have more of a dark line kind of above them again it's not going to be a perfect line I like to fill in those little creases and gaps with the color because it looks more realistic that way so you can tell there's a bit of a thicker line above the scales in this case but it's not like a straight line because that wouldn't look very realistic um, there are some small scales on the side that have a really thick outline above as well so I'm careful to make sure that that doesn't look too much like a straight line either and as I get into the bigger scales that line becomes a little bit thicker um, and I'm kind of just using a shading technique to create the line so it, it looks a little bit more fuzzy and realistic and I'm not creating any kind of harsh line I know I keep repeating that but that's so important not to create harsh lines in your realistic artwork um, and these darker scales I'm creating a bit of a gradient for not darker these bigger scales I'm creating a bit more of a gradient for they're mostly blue though in this section of the iguana so um, except that bigger scale there that I'm working on now so those really big ones have a little bit of detail going on in the scale itself um, and I'm adding that detail that's one thing I like about drawing reptiles is they have a lot of like detail in their scales and it just looks really cool some of the bigger ones have almost like dents or scratches in them or different colors going on and that can be fun to portray so you'll notice I'm going in with that indigo blue or I think it's Payne's gray or something that blue dark blue toned pencil creating a lot of um, color between the scales because that's what is going on in my reference photo and it's kind of like a negative space thing almost but I think it looks really really cool the scales are kind of like on top of it or um, it's surrounded by 
that dark indigo blue color and it just looks really really pretty and I'm just copying that straight out of my reference photo and as again as I said you don't want to skip any details because even those small little details look really really cool and help everything come together in the end. And now we're just moving on to more small scales and they all still have their individual shapes. The ones at the bottom towards the bigger scales have a really dark outline, a very dark outline compared to the ones near the eye which have a super light outline. If I'm not using gray, I'm using like orange just very lightly to define those outlines there. There is also this thing on the side of the iguana and excuse me, I just do not know what it is. It has, it looks really pretty like a jewel or something. I don't know if it's its ear. I don't know what it is. It's really pretty though. It's that orange green thing kind of in the middle um, and I'm just creating the scales around that. So I'm going to skip over the eye for now. We're going to get to the eye, but the eye gets a little bit complicated. So I'm just going to create all the scales around the eye before I go in and start working closer to the eye because those scales get really, really small and complicated. Um, but for the eyes above, or for the scales above the eye, I notice that a lot of them have like a dark blue, kind of like those scales above the nose. They have a bit of a dark blue that fades into the light blue. A lot of different variation of color going on there and that's what I'm trying to portray, um, especially that section right above the eye, that has a lot of variation going on. So I don't want to miss out on any of that. Um, and it really helps to make the scales look less flat when you have that kind of variation going on. It almost looks like a landscape or something. I mean, it's just so complicated, this whole pattern with all of these scales. And now we can get to the eye. So I had to sharpen my pencils a lot to do this part. <laughs> so there's a lot of really, really, really tiny little scales. They're often very like orange yellow toned, but the blue kind of fades into it, which was a little bit hard to do. For these, I kind of drew in the scales first um, and used a little bit more pressure. And then I went in with the color and added that on top because really there's not enough, um, there aren't enough big scales to define them first and then color them in the way I'm doing with the others. So for those really tiny scales, I like to just define them first and then just kind of color all at once on top and try to blend the color as best as I can. And as I get closer to the eye, there's some creases and lines that I'm kind of working on. I love working on any area around the eye, but those have tiny little scales or tiny little details as well. So I think the important part for this is just make sure your pencil is super sharp because you'll need it to be, um, especially for those really, really tiny details around the eye. And this is not a huge scale drawing either. I'm drawing this on a regular, I think, 8 by 10 or 9 by 12 paper. So um, it's actually quite small and it's kind of hard to get in all those little details. So I definitely need to make sure my pencils are sharp. And then I just worked on the eye a little bit, added some highlight to it to kind of finish it up. And now I'm going to go and start working on those small scales again, um, getting towards the iguana's beard. So I'm not showing the beard in this video. I haven't gotten there yet. It's mostly small scales there though, so it's not going to be super interesting. For really tiny scales, I kind of just define them all first, draw them all in, and then color them. And you can kind of draw a pattern before for some areas. I did that on the arm. I drew the scales in using a pattern, but for other areas, it's almost like the scales are so tiny, you might as well just draw them all in <laughs> manually by yourself, row by row. It's going to take me forever, but it will be worth it. Um, I think that that's kind of enough for this video. This video has already been pretty long. You guys watching me draw a bunch of tiny little scales. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. And I will continue working on this iguana since it'll take me forever. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.